what is he up to now? Welcome back. Got another hot topic. We've got a lot of hot topics, but this one is definitely a hot topic. And I didn't realize it was such a hot topic until I've been watching the social medias and the Instagram and the Facebook and all that kind of thing this past month here. And I saw a lot of people asking questions about these, these, these crash pads. They're you know, the things that go there by your hip there on the sides of your GPW or your MB. And they call them crash pads, but I really don't see how that would be. And I'm also telling you that this is not, this is not, disclaimer now, this is not a safety device. This is just a little something there they designed where you get a little jolt there and your hip doesn't pound against the outside panel there of the Jeep. Not a safety device. Remember I said it? That's three times. Anyways, got into this film a little while ago and I wanted to show it to you how to install them because again, a lot of people have been asking, we're going to get back into the electric. I know a lot of people keep asking me, send me a message, hey Scott, when's the next electric video? Not electric video. Electric's done, I promise you. I've shot all the film. Just these things come up and they're kind of important and uh, you know, folks need to help on how to install them. It's not hard. You just need a couple things. Uh, you need a glue gun and that's the most important thing. And if you don't have one, you can borrow one and stay to the end of the video. We need to talk about that. Anyway, here's how you install your canvas and your pad and your crash pad. I think you'll like it. Let's start out by taking a look at the crash pad metal backs by Joe's Motor Pool. They are part number A3114 and A3115. And notice the differences in the angles on the radiuses here. So we'll designate these as they are installed on the Jeep. The sharper angle or longer one goes down, and I'll show you that later in the video. Flip them over here, and we'll take a look at these threaded sleeves that are welded to the plates. They're very solid, very nice, and they come pre-painted, which is a nice thing to stop them from rusting. They are designated as left and right, or driver side and passenger side, and I'll show you that later in the video when we install them on the Jeep. Let's take a look here at the canvas crash pad cover set, part number A3114 and A3115C. Very nice canvas, very nice color, very nice stitching as you see there. It shapes perfectly to the metal backing pad. Take a look here at the foam insert. That comes with the canvas pad set. It does not come with the metal backing plates. These parts are sold separately. You've got a nice thick high density foam here and it's cut perfectly to fit inside that canvas. This is gonna be a high quality foam that we're going to enjoy for many, many years. Okay, let's get started with the install and the assembly of these parts. So we've got the crash pad attaching hardware kit, and that is part number A3114K. I'm going to show you that later in the video as well. Just to show you that from the beginning, you will need those three things to install these crash pads. Let's open up the canvas here. We'll just spread it open with our hands, and you see, again, the stitching inside is very high quality. These are not going to come apart. We're going to take the lower or shorter side and fit it into there. And this is going to take a little doing. You're just going to have to work that foam in and kind of compress it a little bit to fit the shape of the back side or the front side it would be if it was installed on the crash pad. Just work yourself around and you pinch it and squeeze the foam in. You can keep flipping it over and checking it to make it fills up the form or the shape there as I'm showing you here. And we've got plenty of tail here or extra material on the back side where we can attach that to our metal plates. I'll be using a hot glue gun to attach that extra material and I'll show you exactly how to do it. We'll fold it around that plate. Now here's a hot glue gun and this is a commercial gun or a contractor's gun. You can buy those at the hardware store and you'll also need a magic marker. Now I'm using a silver one just for make it to be easy to see and then I've got a piece of 80 grit sandpaper here and I'll show you what I'm going to use that for. You're going to flip your metal plate over and the idea we're going to have is, is we want to have our paint that's on there because it's got a little sheen to it. We want that to be roughed up so that the glue has a nice rough surface to stick to. Now when you're sanding this you don't have to take it down to the bare metal. In fact what you really want to do is you just want to scuff that up and take the sheen off of it and have a rough surface again for that hot glue and that canvas to stick to. In addition to a rough surface for the glue to stick to, we're also going to want a clean surface to stick to. So I'm going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, and I'm just going to clean off any dust or residue uh, for where the areas there where I sanded. And you'll see after I get this done wiped, it's clean. I am removing some residue, and that's going to make for a nice, clean, and rough surface for our canvas and glue to stick to. I have also want to show you that I have done both sides or insides there of those legs that stick up on the outside there of the metal plate. 
Okay, we're ready to fit the canvas, so we're going to take the shape. We've already got that pressed in there. And just give it a one little push one more time, about a quarter of an inch down, because you're going to want to compress that as you push this metal plate into the back. You don't have to push it really far. Again, about a quarter of an inch. That's going to make for a nice, neat fit over the top of the metal plate. So we'll roll this over the back, and I'm going to start with the top side there, and I'll lay this up on the bench here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this canvas and make, make it nice and even or lined up, and then I'm going to fold it over so that canvas just touches that crease or that bend on where that metal is formed. And then we're going to take our finger and we're going to rub it back and forth on the canvas, and what that'll do is it'll make a temporary crease and it will make your little line where you can line that back up after you use the glue gun to install it. Now I've had my glue gun heating up now for about six, seven minutes and the glue is hot enough and I know it's going to come out. Now you want to be careful when you're doing this because if you do get this on your hands and it's too hot, it will stick to your fingers and it will burn you. So I'm just going to put a little bead here on the back side of this metal and then I'm going to let it cool just a little bit. Now you don't want to let it sit a long time because then your canvas won't sit to it. But just let it cool a little bit so it's still tacky and then that little crease that we made earlier, you can line that back up with the metal backing pad and then fold it over the top and then use your fingers to work the canvas into the hot glue. I'm just pinching it here and it's not burning my hands. Like I said, this canvas is thick and I've let that glue cool down just a little bit. If you take it too early and you squeeze it too early, you're going to squeeze glue out and it is going to burn your hands. You can see there I've got that nice uh, adhesion there and that line is lining up exactly where I set it up. Now we'll flip this over and do the same thing to the opposite side. The longer side is a little bit more difficult to do because you've got a little bit of a sharper angle before the radius, but basically we're just going to fold that in until it touches that crease with our fingers, and again, just crease that canvas by pushing your hands back and forth on there and make you a little line where you can see it. As you can see there in the video, it's kind of like a lighter color, and then we'll go ahead now and we'll do the same thing, and we'll install the glue onto the back side here, let it cool a little bit, and then work that canvas into the glue. I'm putting about a quarter inch bead and just squeezing gently and I'm just going to run it down the center there. You see I've got a little glue that dripped on the bottom. It's not going to be a problem. You can peel that off later. And here's the fun part. Now I let it cool just a little bit and we're going to start here at the top and we're going to fold that right back over that crease that I showed you earlier. That crease is essential into getting that exactly where it needs to be and it's going to help you as you fold it. You have to pinch this back and forth again. Please watch your hands if you want to wear gloves. I found wearing cotton gloves makes it a little bit more difficult because the glue wants to stick to your gloves. If you let it cool a little bit, it's not going to burn your hands, but you got to get right in there in the, in the sweet spot, I'll call it, or where the glue is still warm enough to stick, but not cold enough where it won't stick. I folded that piece of canvas there against the back crease on that metal just like I did the first one. And now we're going to move to this part where we're going to fold the two outside flaps in. Now this is where you're going to want to push that down that quarter of an inch like I showed you and make sure that canvas is tight and you get a fold. I've done this a couple of times before I made the video and I found out that right there at the top if you fold that line and it touches right there at the bottom of those two threaded sleeves for the screws, you're just about the right spot. Now I'm going to take my magic marker and I'm going to make a line on the metal plate. I'm using that silver because it's really easy to see in the video. You can use black or whatever color you need to. But basically what we want to do is we want to find this area here and then we're going to take our sandpaper again and we're going to scuff that metal plate up again on the back and we're going to bring it right up to that line that we made with the magic marker and that'll give us the designated area that we'll be folding that particular part of the canvas to. I'll show you that in a second here. Again, you don't need to scuff this up to the bare metal. You just want to scratch that surface and get that sheen off that paint so the glue can adhere to it really nicely and it won't come loose. After we get it scuffed up, we're going to do the same thing with the rubbing alcohol in the pad there just to clean off the sand residue and make sure we've got a nice clean surface to stick to. Once the rubbing alcohol dries, we'll go ahead again and we'll take our hot glue gun. Now back on this side, I'm using a little bit more glue than I did on what I'll call those ears that I did in the first. I'm probably putting between a quarter and a half inch of glue on the back side there, just up to that line. You'll see it's just before the line, and I'll show you why here. When you push down on that canvas, some of that glue is going to want to push towards that line you made. And if you come just below it, your glue will not seep past that canvas and get on your hands there. I'll push a little hard here and I'll show you what I mean. There's a little spot there if you look where the glue starts seeping out, that's where you want to stop. And I'm starting in the middle and then working my thumb outwards toward the outside of the pad, and that way it keeps everything nice and flat against the metal. We're going to go ahead later and we're going to glue those corners in, but for now they're not glued. I just glued the front side. Now I'll take my thumbs and I'll pinch those two radiuses in, and that canvas will form to that, that area as you push it down at a hold, and then we'll go ahead and we'll go back with the hot glue gun and we'll just put a little dab right there in the corner, and then we can force those corners back down and they'll be adhered really nicely and they won't come loose. 
This is an area where you want to take your time and make sure you get a really nice tuck and make sure that's adhered. That's what's going to make for a nice job and a nice corner on that radius there as the canvas rolls around those corners. We'll go to the other side here. Again, you just need a little dab. It's not even the size of a pea that I'm using in the corner, and I just push that corner down and make sure it's nice and tight. Now we can go back to the short side here, and that's going to be a little bit different than the top side. It's not quite the same area. You're going to want to fold that so it kind of parallels the bottom there, and just use your thumbs and pull Pull on that until you feel a nice snug fit on the front. This is what's going to finish you up and make it work really nice on the outside before you install it. You can flip it over and take a look just to make sure you like everything. And then, to, again, take the magic marker, make yourself a nice line. I won't show you the sanding and the cleaning part here. I understand you probably get that by now. And that's a very important step. That's why I, I kind of said it over and over again. You really want your stuff clean and dry before you apply the glue. That's going to be the key to success here. So I'm going to go ahead here and put my hot glue back on the back side and this is where the last fold is going to make it count because this is what brings everything tight. We'll push again that canvas right to that line and then we'll work that in and squeeze it just until the glue touches the magic marker line we made and then when I flip this over I almost guarantee you that it's going to be a nice snug fit and it's going to be round and nice the way it's supposed to fit on that pad. We'll do the corners the exact same way that we did the ones on the long side and that'll finish everything up. Make sure everything's snug and tight and then we flip it over. You can see it fits perfectly perfectly. It's really nice and snug. There's no wrinkles in it. And then now we can go ahead and install it onto the body of the Jeep. And I still have my fingers and my thumbs there and they're not burnt. So I'm really happy about that. Now let's go out to the tub on the Jeep here and I'll show you the holes, the location of the holes on the side of the tub here. They're right by the grab handle and you can see the configuration of them and we're going to be using again the hardware kit is part number A3114K and those are the screws and the lock washers that you will need to install the crash pad. I found it makes it easier if you install the lock washers on the screws, all of them first, before you try to install the crash pad. That way you're not fumbling with them as you're doing the install. Now here we go with the, this is the passenger side, and you see there's two straight lines, which I'll call them two angled line sleeves there that are threaded. Now that sharp radius angle goes towards the downside or floor of the tub and then it goes over the top of the hat channel like I'm showing you. You kind of position it right there of that lip on the outside of the tub and you can line up one hole. I like to do the one on the lower one and as you see here I've got a little bit that I'm off so I can adjust up and down just to make sure before I start putting the screws in that all the screw holes line up. It'll make it really nice for you when you go install and you won't be fighting it. I've just threaded all of these in by hand for the time being and make sure that everything lines up. If you Tighten two or three of them at a time. You try to do one, and you're not going to be able to move it, and you won't like that. You'll have to undo them anyway, so just do them hand tight first. Here, I've tightened them all up with a screwdriver, and there again, it's the old famous Scott Schiller. I've got to clock all my screws. It's just something I like to do. I think it looks nice. And then we'll have to prime and paint these later, but for all purposes intended, that crash pad is installed, and I don't believe it will come unraveled at any point in the near future. And there's the one installed on the driver's side. I want to go through that last bit of camera reel just one more time as I want to show you one last thing before the video ends. The crash pad on the passenger side would be the right hand crash pad, the right hand side, as you designate the area from where you're sitting in the driver's seat. So the crash pad on the driver's side would be the crash pad that is installed on the left hand side. And this video here is just again to show you the orientation of those crash pads. You look at the radiuses and the way that that points on the sharp side down on the short side in the back or long side on the top, short side on the bottom. And then we'll look at the driver's side there again. That's how they're installed. I appreciate you watching. And that's our artsy and crafty thing for the day. Again, not a safety device, but they do call it a crash pad. I had to break out the uh, jacket here in Charleston, South Carolina. It's been very, very cold lately. Well, it's winter time. You know, we get down into the 50s, and that's cold for me. This jacket's been around for a while. Maybe you think if I could put a crash pad together, maybe get the sewing machine out and fix these holes. But I kind of like that, too. On the topic of the glue gun, gentlemen, ladies, if you borrow one from the crafty person of your significant other in the house, return it to them clean. Don't just wind the cord all up, shove it in the box, put the glue back in there and leave it all goo gooed up on there because when they go to use it again and they find that you did it that way, they're not gonna be real happy. Ask me how I know. Anyways, my friends, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, keep up with what we're doing, the 43 Will SMB, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button and click that little bell down there on the bottom also on your screen so you'll get notified when we release new videos. Until next time, keep it crash padded. It's not a safety device. And happy jeeping.